You're listening to the Salty Sex Cast with Mariah and friends. Minimize the fear. Expand your awareness. Well, welcome, Melissa. Um, This is Mariah here for all those tuning in to our audio and anyone who's on YouTube watching us. Hi. Um, Today we have a wonderful repeat guest. I'm really excited to have someone here who just is in tune to so much of everything that we try to do here on the podcast. Um, And she is doing it all on her own in a very beautiful way through coaching and everything. So um, Melissa Height is joining us and she is the founder of Higher Sex Education. And um, you can visit her website at HigherSexEducation.com. Just a little bio. So if you didn't catch it the first time that she was on the show, um, Melissa is a life coach who particularly specializes in growth and healing around that sexuality. Um, Been coaching for 13 years, and she does this through classes, workshops, one-on-one coaching, and um, a great Facebook page just if you want to peruse and get some information and um, absorb that on your own. But if you also want that guidance, she's there for you as well. So welcome, Melissa. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me back. Yes. Love it. So when I asked you to come back on the show, you sent me a word that I have actually never heard before mm-hmm. and I had to look it up. Um, and I'm going to let you introduce that word. Cause I feel uh-huh. like I butcher it today, <laughs> but, uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to try, I'm going to have a stab at it. So erotophobia. Oh, yeah. Close enough. Erotophobia. Like erotophobia. There we go. I want to do the error. <laughs> erotophobia. Erotophobia. Okay. What is it? Yeah. Yeah. Erotophobia is the fear of sex or negative attitudes about sex. And sex, as you know, as your audience probably knows, is much larger than we think it is. It's not just one act that our genitals do. Sex is a very vast, broad topic in our culture. And so um, the fear of anything sexual and negative attitudes about sexual things. That is erotophobia. Fear and negative attitudes towards it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So a lot of what we're constantly fighting against. Yes, we want to educate everyone. Yes, we have materials. It's safe. Um, but really, if we could get that hurdle, move past it, um, so much more would happen. So Kind of tell me about what's the work you're doing and how you're, I don't want to say fighting against it. Are you fighting against it? How do you view Um, yourself? (laughs) No, I don't think fighting against things is, is uh, real effective in a lot of ways. Uh, I like the idea of creating, creating a new, creating what's new. I think some of these old ways of being, some of these archaic um, attitudes around sexuality are just dying on their own. I don't think I need to fight it. Um, I'm more interested in healing ourselves on individual levels, myself on an individual level, that's my commitment. And then having that spread out on into societal levels. Um, Erotophobia is not just our mental attitudes about things. It permeates our, our environments, meaning our internal environments as well as our external environments. So our internal environments, again, not just mental, this will be like our, our muscular system, like our muscles, our tension, our endocrine system, when we get nervous and the hormones that run through us and like all of our body systems are affected by this. And then our external systems are affected by this with um, our laws and legislation and what we allow and don't allow to be talked about. And to, you know, this, we know this topic, this can go on forever. Um, and so I think starting to heal that erotophobia starts with noticing it within our own bodies in real time. So when we see a a sex scene in a movie or a kissing scene or PDA in public or someone mentions a word and you as an individual being start to notice where you tense up, where do you get this like, 
it may or may not come with a story. It may or may not come with like, that's not okay, or that's inappropriate, or oh my gosh, did they just say that, or any of that kind of stuff, but it will come with a physical sensation. So because my work is body centered, because my, my mentors and my teachers and my training has all come from body centered work, I, I find that to be the most effective to go into the body and see what the body's doing and witness that first, first, just be a witness to it. Like with curiosity, oh, that's curious. I just got nervous around that sex scene. I just got nervous that that couple's touching each other right now. You know, I'm noticing that like my gut has this knot in it. Just being there with the the sensation of our bodies is the first step. Mm. And then we can add breath to it. Then we can like add some space in there. Like, okay. And do some kind of like self-soothing, like, okay, Melissa, it's, it's okay. Um, it's actually okay. Just relax and breathe and like give some open space to the situation. Um, one more thing. Judgment doesn't help. Judgment doesn't help you or anyone to judge yourself, to be like, why, you know, I should be past this or why do I have this reaction? We all have erotophobia. We all have a lineage uh, of trauma with sexuality and training and our our culture upholds this our society upholds this thick and rich of of a, a mentality to be uncomfortable around such things so you stopping and noticing what's happening in your body and adding breath to that and healing that for yourself in every given moment is revolutionary is rebellious is effective rebellion against the cultural norms that this stuff is bad and wrong. So um, have some have some patience with yourself and some love and forgiveness with yourself as you as you heal these kind of things because you're you're pushing against more than just your own stuff. Your inherited stuff. Like you didn't ask for what you inherited with this shit pile. <laughs> Yeah, it, I can't sit here and blame myself. It's my fault. I have this reaction. It is so many things going on um, and intersections of things that are happening too. And so it's really just um, creating self-awareness non-judgmentally. And then what do I do about that? First stage. Okay. I'm having a response or, or knowing what's, you know, something's bringing up. Um, Maybe it was scrolling past this podcast and reading that it has sex in the title. (laughs) That could be something. What came up for you? So asking any of our listeners, what happened when they were going through that? Um, And you said real time. So that's something that I would love to stay on just for a moment, because a lot of times we're, I mean, if you're looking at that mindful reaction, it is right now, it is not the past. It's not worrying about what's happening next. It's what's going on. And so that's the real time. Um, What's the benefit of that when you're looking at the healing piece for yourself and others? Yeah. You can't change it. If you're in the past or in the future, your, your thoughts and feelings and opinions about the past or the future are not something you have control over it. Mm-hmm. you have control in the present moment. You have control of your body more than you know when you're realizing something's happening for it, when you're realizing you're having some kind of feeling or judgment or um, reaction to something that you may or may not want to have a reaction to. Like, I want to be cool with that. I want to be okay with that. Like mentally, I'm okay with that. A lot of my clients come to me and they say like, mentally, I should be, I know that I'm okay with this or mentally, Um, this isn't an issue for me, but I still have this reaction in my body, which keeps me from connecting with my partner or whatever it may be. Like we, we still have our body's reactions and we need to honor our body. And that is always in real time. That is always in the present moment. So practicing being present in the moment is the key to healing anything. Uh, That's such a great thing to point out. So, um, we're thinking of this word, looking at this phobia, this fear of it. And you mentioned the healing, there's different pieces and levels of healing. So tell me just a little bit more about that. Yeah. Well, there's all the levels and layers of our body. And then there's spiritual and energetic levels. If that's something you're into, if it's not, 
it's still happening anyway. You don't need to be into it, but it's still happening. <laughs> um, and then there's the societal levels and how we operate as different cultures and how we operate in our world with other people. And um, it's something I make a point to do in conversations and stuff is I will not to be inflammatory, not to be too provocative. I'm naturally somewhat provocative, but I'll bring up topics and talk about my body or talk about a conversation that I had or talk about something that's like mildly sexual and then just kind of feel the temperature of the room and just feel where people like kind of froze and kind of freaked out and kind of are having their own stuff. And I will add breath to it so we can all add breath to it. And I will add some movement because I know that like if we stay real stoic about this kind of thing, it's not going to help. So I, I will massage the room by massaging myself, by adding breath, that kind of thing. So the levels of healing starts within us, within our bodies. And then it, we go to our mental state too of our thoughts and beliefs about different things. And that permeates outward. So all the levels of, of, and layers of internal and external environment in the healing that, that we can have there. I think, I think we can't really get as far as we want to get in our culture with all sorts of different blocks. And they're not all about sexuality. We have money blocks and abundance blocks. We have, you know, we have all sorts of things. My work and my curiosity and my fascination has always been with sexuality and my experiences with sexuality. And for me, that's where I know that I need to be in the world is working with healing in this way. Cause those are the blocks I see where people just want to like be held, but they're scared that that's wrong or people just want more intimacy and they don't know how to have it or, these kind of things. That's, that's where I'm at. That's what I like to help with the healing and sexuality intersection. Yes. Beautiful. Um, let me ask you why, okay, we're going to pivot just for a second. <laughs> um, why higher sex education? Yeah. Thank you. That's a great question. I, I like how do I say this? I don't, I don't want to judge anyone for the work they're doing and, and all of the work that we're doing around sexuality. There are so many people doing wonderful work around sexuality. And I see a lot of it still really low level stuff, like really um, like base level, which sexuality is base level. And it's great. And I like, I like all that, the dark, raunchy, all that kind of stuff. And I think it's really great. My interest in sexuality is is connecting our whole channel is connecting everything from that base part of sexuality through all of our chakras through our heart center, through our intuition third eye and in the higher realms and into altered states i'm into the whole channel of who we are as a person and connecting that with our sexuality like that's what i'm about i'm about elevating the conversation i'm about bringing it into a into a holier light, holy meaning sacred, but holy also meaning complete and whole. Mm -hmm. um, Look at holistic wellness. Um, absolutely. So there's, yeah. If, if someone can't um, connect with the energy analogy or, or still are blocked to it, I should say, you know, they can still connect with it and maybe some other different language pieces and yeah. be open and aware. I think that's our biggest we just want to create a little bit of more awareness each, each episode. Um, yep. but so we have this fear of sex and it does some harm. Um, particularly there was, um, so you're in Utah, I'm in Utah. This is where the, the podcast is based out of. And, um, I don't even know how to present this. There's so much <laughs> pain and misinformation and harm done because mm -hmm. of probably that fear of sex. Mm -hmm. um, particularly, we just had the Utah state legislature voted against a bill that would have expanded sexual education, particularly pieces on boundaries, consent, and how to recognize sexual mani manipulation. So I felt like when I went and cause I went to high school here in Utah, I remember just 
avoid this. And here are all the diseases you're going to get if you don't avoid it. Like that's all I remember. And it was a huge, it was fear-based, um, and really scary and really, um, one dimensional. Like, I don't even know if that's, it was so limited, so limited on how the vast piece of that sexuality and sexual, um, everything <laughs> like not even birth control. I don't remember it. Like that is basic stuff. So, yeah. um, I know that you do a lot of work with, uh, trying to create that opportunity to maybe get some of those gaps from what we're blocked here in Utah for, <laughs> what does that look like for you? Yeah, those things bridge so well together. I'm glad you brought it up. I am really focused on boundaries right now. I did just create a boundary course that is going so wonderfully. Um, there's room for more participants right now if anyone wants to do that. Um, and it's a 12 week in-depth course on, on boundaries. We can talk about that more later, but how that relates is this bill was about, was about boundaries. And I read the bill and I, the only thing I could see that was wrong with it, if there was anything wrong with it, is it, it used the word sex so much that I think it was triggering for anyone that has pretty deep ingrained erotophobia, just the word sex. And you're talking about my children and like, no, these don't go together without, if you work through that erotophobia, if you work through your tension, you can see and read that like, we're, we're not even talking about sex, what you think sex is. We're talking about a body autonomy for children to understand that they are in charge of their own bodies and the importance of that. It's public safety information that needs to be given to children. Mm -hmm. And it being shot down, I feel like just shows, just shows the fear, the fear that we have of even having healthy, normal conversations about natural human experiences. We need to be able to have healthy conversations about natural human experiences. Like we have to have these conversations. So if we can rewrite that bill, maybe I can reach out to those people who rewrote the bill and talk about wording that would be more gentle for mm. people to read more gentle to read because I understand the triggering nature of things and if you're not aware that you have this erotophobia again we all do I do we all do we've all been raised in this traumatic culture so if you're not aware of it you're just going to see sex 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 and it's just like trauma just does this overwhelm it just does this like la 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 I can't handle anymore that's too much and if we talk about health and choice and body autonomy. Um, safety. Safety. safety was a big one. Yeah. Yeah. And if we talk about things like you're in charge of your body and if someone's doing something that doesn't feel good to you, you're allowed to say no. You should say no, no to that. This is how you say no to that. Like that's so basic. Mm -hmm. And if we're not giving each person that tool, we're setting them up to be taken advantage of. If people don't understand that they're allowed to say no about something happening to their body, that's really basic. And it's unfortunately a huge problem that permeates our culture because we're not able to give that tool to people. The ability to say no, and then the ability to take that no, I get it is a two-way street. I think that's when you're teaching consent, um, you're teaching both parties or all parties, you know, what that looks like for someone to say yes or no to you and you to say yes or no to someone else. And I think that's so important because sometimes we're, someone is saying, Hey, this is no, I don't want this, but no one was ever taught how to read that and respect that. Um, and just like you said, that fear just turned everyone off. Mm -hmm. And now we have something I think scarier to deal with in what way that we're the lack of that education, the mm -hmm. lack of that awareness. Um, mm -hmm. we're putting people in danger, not being open to it. So, um, if suggesting writing it or, you know, putting language out there, that's a little more gentle kind of creates that space for healing to be aware of what's going on 
said a couple of words um, in there, but is there anything else that you feel like could have really been included to help with that? Along the same lines, compassion for the reader. Mm. Like with changing the language, compassion for the reader to not be so triggering, to have it be more gently worded. Um, and not that it was worded inappropriately in any way, but we're messed up as people. We are messed up around sexuality. We all are, and we all have a responsibility to heal that. So to more gently explain to people what consent education is and what it looks like and and to take it away from being fear-based and take it away from being, um, maybe not take it away from being related to sexuality because it is related to sexuality, but the word itself, pe most people think that it's all about intercourse, that sex is intercourse and don't see that it's vastly more broad and wide of a topic. Um, so just having more compassion for everybody. We all have this trauma. We all have this ingrained uh, um, tension and ingrained uncomfortability. Like it's, it's learned, but it's also in our DNA. It's also inherited. We also came in with it. So there's so much of it that we're not, if we're not aware of, we're not in control of. Yeah. Are there any um, other societies that we could mirror or, or maybe not mirror or pick up. I'm sorry, this is left field question, <laughs> but, um, you know, looking at other examples that we can maybe follow. I know this is very Western, um, view of sexuality and, you know, immorality that they're one in the same. Um, you can't be a sexual being without being a moral be being like, it's, it's very much, you know, rooted in a lot of things, but you were kind of saying it's like in our DNA, um, outside of maybe our, um, our Western culture, have you seen other examples of where it's maybe carried on, but on the healthier spectrum? Yeah, well, in the Netherlands, the Dutch, I think, are a lot more advanced because they're relaxed about sexuality topics. Um, consent conversations are introduced in kindergarten, which developmentally is the stage when you start to introduce these conversations around five years old, when you start to talk to people about, this is your body, this is my body, you're in charge of it. Yeah. You get to take ownership of it. And instead, with religion, unfortunately there's often a message at that time of being separated from it of don't touch your body you're not allowed to touch your body it's wrong and bad to touch your body instead of connecting with your body and being responsible with it it's a totally different way mm. of going about it and I my experience I've spent a good deal of time in Europe and especially um in and around Amsterdam in my experience with the young adults and into adulthood, they're just more willing to have conversations and there's just a relaxation about it. For me, it's very, it feels very like calming and comforting to be able to have normal conversations with people. Um, I've been witness to a daughter talking to her dad about um, her first sexual experience, her sexual debut and the joy and excitement that she had and the joy and excitement from him and just this beautiful conversation that I was shocked by. And I, frankly, I, I left and cried because I was so moved by it. Cause I had never, um, I cannot talk to my dad about anything. Like that is not something in, in my culture. That's not something I've ever been raised with is that kind of openness and safety. And she was just so held and just so supported by her new lover, her first, her first lover and by her father, who was the safety support net for her. And I talked to her dad a lot about it and it was just like, this is normal and natural and this is a, a human thing. And I'm really happy that I can talk to my daughter about such a human thing. And I, I was speechless about it. Wow. And I just find that they're way far ahead. And I, I feel sad for America. I feel sad for us here that we're just so juvenile about, we're so underdeveloped about sexuality that it kind of breaks my heart. That's a great 
language to grab with that. Um, underdeveloped because that shows that we have a piece of control and we still get to change and grow. So that's something you center on is growth and healing. We can do it, right? So it's not too late. It's not, we are doomed. It is not, we are so unhealthy. We can never come back from this. It is, we see exactly where it could be. And here are some pieces um, that you can take to develop that further. Um, And so that is, boundaries are a few pieces. We maybe can't change what's in taught in schools right now in Utah, but what's something we do have control over right now. So you mentioned a little bit about your boundaries course. Do you mind telling Mm -hmm. us more about it? Yeah, I love it. Um, so I see boundary work as internal work as well as external work. And most, most books and courses and different things I see around boundaries focuses on the external portion, how to communicate with people, how to set boundaries, um, the external interaction of your boundaries with other people. And I, my focus on boundaries is primarily internal work in what is a boundary. Your boundary is your personal truth. And that makes it sound really simple, but it's not, it's not quite that simple. So I focus on internal boundaries and identifying what your personal truth is and how to practice and cultivate knowing that and understanding that. And all of it's little tip here, like all of it's in the body, all of it's in the present moment and all of it's in the body. So my course is a 12 week course on getting people used to, um, their own body language, their own body signals, slowing down to be present. It takes training. It's not something that you can just do, especially yeah. nowadays. Like our attention spans are tiny. Um, our ability to focus is less and less. We think multitasking is a, is a good thing. It's not like monotasking is, is the goal here to be focused on, on what you're doing and stay present with what you're doing. Um, anyway, so most of the boundary work that I do is internal work. And then we progress into some great communication skills that I learned through roundabout through the Hendricks Institute, Gay and Katie Hendricks have really great um, communication skills on listening skills and how to speak your truth, how to speak unarguably, inarguably, and um, that kind of work. So it's a really great course. I'm really, I'm really happy with it. I'm really proud of it. And I'm loving the results that are coming out of it. People are telling me all the time, like, I'm so much more compassionate with myself. I'm so much more gentle with myself. Like that wasn't, that was a goal of mine, but it wasn't something that I really foresaw, but everyone that's been through the course has just found a deep level of self-love coming from it. And that's, that's the goal. Like that's the key. You need to love and honor yourself enough to, to be able to implement boundaries. And what piece of you isn't touched by that? You know, that's going to affect every area of your life in a positive way. Um, I think that's absolutely fantastic and so needed. Um, so it's 12 weeks. Is this group coaching? Is this personal coaching? Is this an asynchronous online module? Like what kind of actual, um, format is this 12 week course? All of the above. So it's a, (laughs) it's, you'll get a weekly lesson for 12 weeks and then eight coaching sessions and then monthly group sessions and then tech support, that kind of thing all the way through. So each week has its own lesson. Um, First week is about integration and how to integrate all of who you are. One of the problems is that we like separate, we diffuse our energy out and we spread ourselves out so much that we're not attuned to and accustomed to, and we haven't built the capacity to hold all of our energy and hold all of our power within us. So we, we talk about that and week one, we talk about our resistance. We have resistance to honoring our boundaries. There are reasons why you don't honor yourself all the time. There's reasons why you don't stick up for yourself all the time. Most of all of which are not your fault at all. And we can heal that stuff. We can go into that and we can heal that stuff. So we work on resistance to honoring your boundaries. We work on self-worth right up in the very front because if you don't know that you're worthy of being protected and being sticking up for yourself, you're not going to do it. If you don't understand deep in your bones that you're worthy of this work, Mm -hmm. you're not going to do it. So all of that stuff's right up in the beginning. Um, You have to lay that strong foundation. That's wonderful. mm -hmm. So I, it's most definitely obvious that you have 
put a lot of energy and work into this. And, um, I have no doubt. I I'm really excited to hear more about it and the results. I have one question on it. So when you said, does it have like a start date and an end date, or is it you start when you start and then you kind of roll into everything. So it's any time right now it's, it's pretty much evergreen. So mostly you can start anytime. I'll have some breaks for myself in my schedule. So there, there's a possibility that I'll have you start next month or that kind of thing, but it won't be more than a month out, but it's pretty much an evergreen thing. And then the lessons are online. You go in and you get your lessons each week and then you schedule your coaching with me. The monthly, the group coaching is wonderful. It's really great to have group coaching. It's a whole different dynamic and coaching for one person is coaching for everyone. And it's beautiful to see that we're all struggling with very similar things and how universal the conversation really is around boundaries. And you're exactly right that it affects everything. Your relationship with yourself affects all of your relationships. That's kind of a duh, but we don't really get that sometimes. (laughs) But if you're not solid with yourself, all of your relationships are going to struggle. All of them. So it's full work. Yeah. So, and I love that you mentioned, um, breaks for you now. And again, because if you, as the person who's providing this doesn't have your own boundaries, (laughs) um, maybe that's a red flag, uh, for those who are looking at that. So that's why I think it's beautiful model, you know, for all those to see that it is so important to have those boundaries. It's so important. And, Um, here's my shameless plug. That's why we've gone to every other week for the podcast. Now it doesn't, Mm -hmm. um, publish weekly. We have an episode every other Monday instead because of that. I mean, I can't produce quality anything Mm -hmm. if I'm just sitting here rambling and stressed about Mm -hmm. the next thing and not being in tune to what I'm needing. And that is most definitely something I personally am working on. And I think it is constant practice. You yep. don't just get to that level and get your gold star and your certificate. It's a continual thing. So that's wonderful. Exactly um, right. So some of the things that, you know, so you said you've been coaching for 13 years and you've really mm-hmm. seen a lot of these pieces that we can start healing. So boundaries are one, um, or, or boundaries is an avenue for that. Um, any success stories that you can share, maybe, um, just honoring that, um, person without saying any names or anything or anything too specific. Yeah. Let me, let me think about that for a sec. The reason, um, I'm doing boundary work, like you said, I've been coaching a long, long time and I've been doing a lot of different things within sexuality and I've a lot of passions and I've chosen to focus on boundary work right now because I see it as the foundational stuff that most of us are missing. So eventually to, in order to do one-on-one coaching with me, I'm going to require my course to be taken. You've got to like really learn how to do this stuff for yourself. And then I'll take you to other levels with mm. coaching. So that's why I've developed the boundary course first. There's other courses that are in my heart and in my mind of different topics that I will definitely roll out in future years. Um, success stories. Oh, I just love my clients so much. I usually, uh, lately I've often left my sessions in, in tears. Like I save it, but I I leave (laughs) so inspired and I'm so happy from what I've heard. And it's the little stuff. Like, I'm not going to give you a grand story right now. It's the little things of, I said no to something I didn't want to do today. And that leaves them in tears because they've never done that before and they've never stuck up for themselves and they didn't know they were allowed to and they didn't know how to and they didn't understand how much it affected them to say yes that things that weren't good for them. So all the stories that I get are these like beautiful little victories that build on each other and that grow and that grow and that grow. So you can learn to be more of who you are and you can live in the world more as who you are. So right now I don't have a big grand success story. I have hundreds of these beautiful little gems of, I got to tell my mom that it wasn't okay to bring up the fact that I'm single and like to poke at me for being single. Like I want to be single right now. And I broke up with so-and-so because I want to be single, whatever it is. And 
I got to communicate that to my mom that it hurt me that I didn't want to hear that anymore. This, this is someone, this is a client saying this. And um, another client planning a wedding, like them practicing saying also to their mom, I don't want this at my wedding. This is not how I want it to go. And I get that you want to be helpful. And I get that you think this is how it should go. And it's my wedding. And this is how I want to do this. Thank you so much for respecting my decision here. Mm. That's hard for people to do. That takes work. And that's my favorite is to support those kind of things and to like hold people and help them. Like you can do this. You can say what you want to say. You can speak up for yourself. You're allowed to speak up for yourself. It's beautiful. I love my work. <laughs> yes. And not in a way that's going to maybe elicit, um, um, like someone fighting back. What's the word? It's not coming to me. Thank you. Um, no, I'm glad you're bringing this up. It doesn't, boundaries don't have to be mean and harsh in this hard line. Boundary, when I talk about internal boundaries, I talk about this because the word um, often elicits the idea of this hard line or this hard fence, which it is in, in out in the world, but it's not necessarily that way with um, personal boundaries and internal boundaries. It's not this hard line. It's not this fence because we're dynamic evolving, changing beings. And so it's this like nebulous <laughs> bubble that we have around us that changes and morphs and moves as we, as we grow and evolve as people. So no boundaries are not harsh and they're not mean and they're not cruel. You can say things gently with compassion, but also you can learn that you are not responsible for anyone else's feelings. Yes. I think that's You're so not important. responsible for their reaction. I'm sorry to interrupt you there. No, I think it's so important because we do internalize and we take that upon ourselves way too often. And, um, I think that's, uh, it really all is intertwined, you know, from, from everything to, um, saying yes and saying no and knowing what, what that looks like and what that looks like for me in this moment, because it can change. And how do I communicate that? And how do I recognize that? I think that's really hard and, and to allow it to evolve and change. Yeah. I think we're so scared because I said no, or because I said yes because I said this, I have to stick to it. So, mm -hmm. um, to be able to start with that internal piece and know when it's okay to get permission and it's okay to change that. Um, not even when it's okay, but when it is vital for your yeah. health and success, I think yeah. uh, we could talk about this all day for sure. And mm -hmm. I'll get emotional because you can tell <laughs> that's something I'm working on very yeah. personal. Me and too constantly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's, it's really great to know that there's safe, um, uh, well-informed resources like your course, like, you know, anything else that, uh, trained individuals who have a lot of practice and, you know, professionals who are there, it's not, doesn't have to just be this blog post you read, <laughs> Yeah. But that we're creating just a, that little piece of awareness today, how important and how much that all affects. So those personal boundaries. Um, and one word that you kept saying, and now of course it's left me right now because I'm trying to recall it. Um, soft. Empathy is kind of the words that are relating to it right now. Compassion. Compassion, being compassionate yeah. on how you do that. And um, I think just yeah. even how simple I'm writing a, a bill <laughs> about yeah. sex education, how much and how empowering that could be. Um, yeah. Is there anything else coming up for you that you feel like the need to share with our listeners would be really important takeaway or yeah. 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 When you were talking, when we were just talking about honoring our personal truth and speaking up for ourselves, one of the things that we go through in the course, and one of the things we don't really realize um, as humans is the, the effect of not sticking up for yourself. Cause it's really easy to think in the moment of like, Oh, it's fine. I'll just do it. Like, like I don't really have the energy, but she needs me. So I'm going to go support her. 
when the boundary is clear, I don't have the energy. I need me. We don't realize that that breaks trust with ourself. That mm-hmm. severs our relationship with ourself. That puts a wedge in our relationship with ourself. So that turns our body against us. How many of us have lived lives fighting with our own bodies? You will never find peace at the expense of your own truth. Is that my quote or is that somebody else's quote? <laughs> I don't know who said it, but it's true. You will never find peace at the expense of your own truth. You can't continue to, de- to deny your personal truth and have a healthy, thriving, vital relationship with yourself. Mm. So that's something to get really clear on with boundary work is the importance of sticking up for yourself. Yeah. I have a really good friend I can think of right now, a really good friend of mine that lost her mother. And um, I really wasn't there for her when it happened. And she got really angry at me. And I had to say to her, like, I watch and I am dealing with my mental health right now. And I, I'm not putting you aside because I don't want to be there for you. I absolutely want to be there for you. I have to make sure my mental health is okay in order for me to be there for you. And I will show up with you for you when and how I can. And that was a really challenging conversation. Of course, I want to be there for my friend when she's struggling, when she lost her mom. That was, I felt shitty, but I know that I felt shitty and I needed to feel better. I needed to be more solid in the world. I was going through a hard time too. And um, it was something that she didn't recognize about me. She saw me as the person who was always put together and that I was always on top of things and I was supportive for other people. And um, not that I need to like flaunt my struggles or like show the world my pain. I don't think that's necessarily, but I need to be honest about it. Mm. I need to be, I need to be, um, I need to be in integrity about it. And I had to say to her, I need to take care of my mental health right now before I can show up for you. And it was such a beautiful conversation. She got it. She heard it. And she stepped back and was like, oh, okay. You know, she didn't need to be mad at me anymore. She just needed to hear my truth. Well, I mean, you validated her and her pain and her need too. I see it. I do see it. I'm not ignoring it. I'm not making an excuse by not, we're going to just put that over here and I'm going to lay out everything that's going on. It's more of this is what's going on, both of us together. And, um, you know, when we can come back when, when that's available, um, I think there's so many times that, yeah, we've, we've just been shut off to, if someone denies us, um, that they don't care or just take it very personalized and the defensiveness and how like hard that is to have a healthy conversation let alone boundaries, I think. And that's, again, when you learn how to have healthy boundaries and the communication skills that go in with that, how Mm -hmm. vital that is for so many other things. And that really, I think, shifts us from a surviving human being to a thriving Mm -hmm. um, being, you know, I think it's really, really cool just to kind of see that shift and feel that shift. Know that there, there's whole higher sex education. <laughs> like let's elevate this. We need to can get out of feel that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's really, really neat. All the work that you do and that you've seen and, um, know that really do work. I mean, we can talk about education. We can say, um, awareness and everything, but just having all of that go in together with tools and, um, where you're at right now in this time is really cool in this moment. So, yeah, thank you. Um, I did want to say that you were mentioning that, um, saying that it's great to have a resource like me in this course of being well-informed and educated. If you want to know more about my education, it is on my website. So I'm not just someone talking about this, which would be fine too. (laughs) I am, but I do have training and education on top of the 13 years of coaching that I've done um, and a lot of experience. So that's in there too. And if you want to, if that's something that matters to you, then check that out on my website. If it matters to you, what you feel in your heart and you're drawn to me in that way, then trust that. But if you need the academic stuff, that's there too. I want to just throw that in there. I think that's great. So higher self education, sorry. Wow. Self. We kept talking about self. 
And so great. I'm I like myself myself right now. That's great. <laughs> Higher sex education.com and all of your resources, all of your um, materials and um, services are on there as well as your bio and uh, the social media are on there. Thank you. There's also a PDF that you can download on just like a little taster on some activities around boundaries. There's a little taster there. And then if you want to look into the course, there's an application right on the front page to, to lead you to that landing page and an application to fill that out and to book a session to see if it's a match to do that course. Um, that's all on there. That's great. And uh, yeah. can I just say how much I respect coaches who have to say it's a match both ends, both sides. Yeah. Yeah. You're not just oh, yeah. there to grab a buck um, no. and how important that is. It has to be fit. And I say that mm-hmm. all the time with my clients as well. Um, it's really important to find that person service that meets your needs mm-hmm. on your level, um, both sides, mm-hmm. or it's just going to be this forced, uncomfortable and more walls and probably yeah. less healing. <laughs> yeah. that's there, so my, my medicine is really potent and it's not for everybody. And I'm okay with that. And it does have to match up on both sides. Um, if it doesn't align, then it's going to be a disservice for both of us. It's going to be a waste of time for both of us. And that's not what I'm here to do. I'm here to help those that are ready for the help that I have to offer. And those are ready for the the knowledge and experience that I have to offer the world. Um, And if not, cool, like good luck finding who your next mentor is and who your next teacher is. That's one of my favorite things. I'm constantly looking for new mentors and teachers and jumping around and learning new things. I'm kind of insatiable in that way. So if you align with me, great. And if you don't, great, go find someone who you do. Yeah, exactly. And you talked a little bit about that baseline being ready for that change to yeah. be ready for that growth. Yeah. Um, Cause if we're trying to premature change things, it can be really uncomfortable. And so part of that, I'm sure application. And then you said just making that boundary course baseline um, at a future date set possibly. So I think that's really, really great and really healthy and um yeah. Anything else coming up for you that you want to share or talk hmm. about? I don't want to take this moment away. We can talk forever. <laughs> I can talk about sexuality topics forever and, and erotophobia and about healing. I've, I've always been obsessed with healing and I've always had this secret obsession and it drive with sexuality. And those have naturally merged in later years after studying both sides separately for a long time. Oh. And so just the idea of healing our sexual selves is just so fascinating to me and just such a beautiful thing to me. And I don't think it'll ever end for me. So, um, I could talk about anything. I could talk about anything there. I think it's so important to, to heal our sexual selves. Like, I think it's holding us back. I think what you want in life is potentially held back from you not being in touch with your own power. Our sexual energy is our power. It's our vital life force right? It's our creation energy. It's what we create in the world. A lot of my clients, we never talk about sex. We never talk about what our bodies do with other people in that way. Um, and we talk about your energy and your, your sexual energy and your creative energy and what to do with that. Um, so if you feel like there's healing to be had for you in that level and you want to, and you feel called to me, I want to help you because it's so fun me and I think it's such a blast um and I think we all have healing to do I think we all like we're born into this matrix that's pretty messed up with the attitudes around the the most natural thing on the planet is sexuality like it's the most natural thing and why we are not so loose and open and like understanding and clear and decisive around our sexuality is just mind-blowing it's so backwards Yeah, I think it's a great call out. And um, again, if you want to know more about Melissa or get to see what her services are, visit HigherSexEducation.com. If you want to follow our web, our, our website, goodness, we don't have a website, our podcast, (laughs) our, see now all the words and everything, but that's okay. Um, we are on social media on Facebook at salty sex cast 
Um, you can email us at saltysexcast at gmail.com if you have more questions or didn't hear the website and you need it typed out. I got you. Just send us an email um, and tune in every other Monday. We have new episodes. And if you want to listen to the episode that Melissa was on first, that is episode 44. So you'll have to go back a little ways. Um, and we'd love to hear about what you think. And if you have any suggestions for any more, if you want to support the podcast, we are on Patreon, um, patreon.com forward slash salty sex cast is how you find us. We're not searchable. You can't type our name in the search bar and hit enter because I guess adult content and more of that fear of sex. <laughs> I got a big eye roll from Melissa. I love it. Um, so I hope everyone stays sexy and salty. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Salty Sex Cast. Ready for round two? Find us on Facebook.